pull out again. And now, as I say, for something completely different. The second half of this class is about document classification, this lesson and the next two. And the only thing it has to do with the first half of the class is that both use the filtered classifier. So let's look at some documents. Here are six documents. They're very short documents. We'll look at a much larger example in a minute. Uh, just a single sentence each, and they're classified into yes and no classes. And you can see when you read these, they're all about oil. The yes documents are about oil coming from the ground, and the no documents are about oil as used in cooking. The food is very oily, for example. And we code these, uh, this training set up into ARF in the standard way. We have string attributes, and string attributes we just take the text and surround it by quotes, just as I've shown in the bottom here. So I've loaded this data set into Weka. We can just have a look at it here. There it is, just what you saw on the slide. And of course, we can't do anything with this at the moment. There are six distinct values for the text attribute, and uh, no learning system can learn anything from these six different values. What we're going to do is to use a filter, the string to word vector filter, unsupervised attribute string to word vector which is here. It's got a bunch of uh, options, but uh, let's just apply it. Wow! Look at all these attributes. We've got uh, 34 attributes. Uh, and they're words like crude and demand and the. And when you look at it, these are just the words that appeared in the training documents. And actually the type, that yes or no thing, has been moved to the first attribute, not the last attribute. And when we look at the individual word attributes, like the one for crude, it's just a number, it's a numeric attribute with two values, zero or one. Zero if it doesn't appear in that document, and one if it does appear in that document. So now let's go and classify this. Let's use J48. J48. It's in grey, actually. I can still select it, but I can't start it. And the reason why I can't start it is that by default Weka is predicting the last attribute, and the last attribute is numeric, the word was. So I just change this to predict the type. Then I can run J48. But there's a problem evaluating it because there's only six instances and we're trying to do tenfold cross-validation, which isn't going to work. So let's just evaluate this on the training set for the moment. And the most useful thing to look at in the result here is the decision tree that's produced, which is here. Let's look at the tree, and you can see that it tests on the single word crude. If crude does not appear, then it's a no document, that is, it's about food. And if crude does appear, it's a yes document, that is, uh, it's about oil coming out of the ground. That makes a kind of sense. It's a pretty trivial example, I guess. So let's just go back to the slides. This is what we've done. We loaded the data sent into Weka. We looked at the string attributes. We applied this filter, which created a lot of new attributes, one for each word. They were binary two-valued numeric attributes. We used J48, had to set the class attribute, and evaluated on the training set, looked at the tree. I want to evaluate this on a supplied test set. And I want to see what the predictions are in this test set. These are the documents in the test set, and I've coded them as unknown. That is question mark in the ARF file. And we've never done this before. We haven't ever looked at predictions for individual test documents or test instances. So let me now go and uh, get the supplied test set, which I have here. And uh, now I've got that test set. I can uh, start this running. And well, it's obvious really there's a problem evaluating the classifier because, you know, when I look at the test documents is an R file with string attributes, and the training documents are an R file with uh, word attributes. Of course, I could take these test documents and convert them using the string to word vector filter, but that still wouldn't solve the problem, because I might have different words in a different order here, so I'd still have a different structure to the R file. Now, I've got to do something different. And that's where the string 
that's where the filtered classifier comes in. Just going back to the slide, there's a problem evaluating the classifier. We can't simply apply string to word vector to the test file. The solution is the filtered classifier. As we saw previously, the filtered classifier will create a filter from the training set and use it for the test set. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. Coming back to Weka, I'm going to undo the effect of this filter. So I've got the original string attribute. I'm going to find the filtered classifier, meta filtered classifier, and uh, I'm going to configure that to use J48 as the classifier, um, which is done by default, and I'm going to use the uh, string to word vector filter. It's an unsupervised attribute string to word vector as the filter. And uh, let me just run this. And here we get the result. Well, that's actually not very interesting because these were uh, these documents had question marks instead of classifications. What I wanted to do was to output the predictions, and uh, I can do that in the More Options menu if I click Output Predictions and run it again. Then now I can see the predictions for the test instances. And as you can see, there's one yes and three no predictions. The actual class is question mark in each case. And coming back to the slide, that's not exactly what I wanted. The first instance is certainly yes, oil coming out of the ground, but so is the third. That should have been a yes, and in fact, J48 has predicted a no for that document. Iraq has significant oil reserves. Obviously, it doesn't contain the word crude, which is the test that J48 is doing. Well, these are tiny little documents. Let's look at something a bit more substantial. I'm going to take a big data set, ReutersCornTrain.off. Let's just look at it in a minute. I'm going to open it now, ReutersCornTrain.off. There's uh, 1,554 documents. This is a lot bigger. If I apply the string to word vector filter, then it just takes a second. I get a lot of attributes corresponding to words. Actually, there are 2,234 attributes. And again, the uh, class attribute is, has been moved to the top, attribute number one. Well, I'm going to undo the effect of this classifier because we're going to classify this using the filtered classifier. I'm going to set a different test set. I'm going to open uh, ReutersCornTest.off and then I'm going to run this with J48 and the filtered classifier and it's just going to take a second. It's finished now. I get 97% accuracy. Well, before we go on, let's actually have a look at what this data set looks like. So I'm going to open up the file, the training file, and here it is. It's, there are two attributes, a string attribute and a class attribute, which is 0 or 1. And here's the beginning of the first string, and it's a long string. In fact, this open quote quotes right down to the closing quote here. This whole bit of text is one string attribute value. And it's followed by a 0, which means the classification of that document is 0. For this data set, that means it's not about corn, this document. And you can see this is regular text, except, well, these backslash ends, those are new lines. If we just had a regular new line in a string, then Weka would get confused when you tried to load in that ARF file, uh, because uh, it would think that the continuation of the line was the next instance. So we just encode new lines as backslash n. So this is one instance, classified as zero. The next thing starts with a quote, this is the string. And it ends here, and that's a one document. This document is about corn. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it just contains the word corn. It means that a human has decided whether this document is about corn or not about corn. I don't know a lot about corn, but an expert will have made that decision. So these are the documents, and like I said, there's 1,554 of them, and each document contains, each instance contains this extensive string. So if I now go back and have a look, well, I've got really high accuracy, 97%, which sounds really good. 
Unfortunately though, when I look at this, the documents that are about corn, the one documents, there's only 24 of them, and the accuracy, accuracy there is 15 correct out of 24, which is not so good. For the zero documents, the ones which aren't about corn, then I've got uh, 573 correct out of 580, which is very good. And when I combine those two, that's what gives me this rather high looking 97% accuracy. When I look at the tree, well, here it is. It's a little bit more complicated. So we're going to branch on the word corn. If the document contains the word corn, then we're going to look for the word planted. If it contains the word planted, then it's a zero. If it doesn't contain the word planted, then it's a one. That is, it's about corn. Down here, we're looking for 19, the word 1986-87, which is a very strange thing to be looking for. And we're looking for the word maize. Here we're looking for the word the. So this tree doesn't look like it makes a huge amount of sense. And yet, it does get 97% accuracy. So this is what we've done here. We looked at this data set. We applied the string to word vector filter just to have a look, and we find that there were 2,234 attributes. Then we used the filtered classifier to get 97% classification accuracy, but we discovered that the accuracy on the 24 corn-related documents was only 62%. That's a shame because those are probably the documents we're most interested in. These are the ones that don't contain, that aren't about corn, and we get very high accuracy on those. Which makes you wonder whether the overall classification accuracy is really the right thing to optimize. So this is what we've done in this lesson. We looked at string attributes. We looked at the string to word vector filter, which creates an one attribute for each different word. Uh, we looked at the options for the string. No, we didn't look at the options. Let's have a really quick look back in Weka here at the options for the string to word vector filter. And well, suffice it to say, there's a lot of options. It's a pretty comprehensive kind of filter. We'll look at those options in a subsequent lesson. We looked at J48 models for text data. J48 is not necessarily a very sensible uh, learning scheme to use on text data. And then we looked at the overall classification accuracy. Is it really what we care about? Perhaps not. And that's what we're going to look at in the next lesson. But before you do that, you should do the activity, which will get you to actually do a little more work on actually classifying real documents. Good luck with that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.